down to tires as promised i said i'd give you a wee uh, video outline of how i'd approach the thesis which i know is pending for monday so below you can see three pick three or four pictures um that i've taken of my of my board which i'll refer to so um yeah look at them as a source of reference so first of all before we choose the um, question focus, I would direct your gaze to um, the plan outline. Now, simple Carol Vorderman maths, you've got 3,000 words. I know you actually have 3,500, but by the time, you know, it's good to plan for 3,000 and therefore if you're over a little bit, it doesn't really matter. You know, 3,200, you're not going to kill yourself. But if you have 3,500 words of stuff to say, brilliant. But I'm just going to aim for 3,000, okay? So I did my maths. Look at the picture. Um, thesis, 200 words. Um, intro, after, after the thesis, you're going to go into your first novel that you're discussing or play if you're doing a play. 200 words. Then, you know, saying what it's about. Um, classic intro stuff. And then we figured um, six analytical paragraphs on, say, the first novel. And then you're going to be looking at your second novel or second play. Six analytical, pa analytical paragraphs on that and then a conclusion. That is guesstimated at 200 words each. Obviously, here and there you won't. Some some. Obviously, some paragraphs you'll be a little bit over, others a little bit under, um, and so you might not end. You might end up with twenty paragraphs or what? I don't mind. It's just a good framework to start thinking about things, um, and then once you've got loads of ideas, you can change and amend it. So basically, I'm asking you to look at the plan because whatever question you pick or whatever statement thesis statement you pick has to satisfy that amount. Of analysis. So think of it as six meaty quotes on, on each text. So let's go on to looking at your thesis statement. Now, I'm in two minds on this. Part of me, if you look at the first two sentences, um, an examination of the significance of something in something and something, you know, the latter two spaces be in the text you've chosen. Why not keep it really simple? So an examination of the significance of sexuality in Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility, for example. So that allows you, it's a big topic. It could be female sexuality, it could be male sexuality. It could be, you know, you're leaving yourself really open bearing in mind those 12 analysis paragraphs. You don't want to tie yourself up too tightly. Maybe on looking at it, for example, you'd think, actually, I could now label it as female sexuality because having looked at the two novels, there is, you know, enough to forget about male sexuality and just to go for female sexuality. My point is, make the question big enough for you to find 12 quotes. Um... And it's, it's the same kind of stuff, a comparative study of something, or um, it could be a comparative study of setting in Vanity Fair and Jane Eyre. There is nothing wrong with you doing it on one text, but remember, I'll need round about 12 paragraphs of analysis on that one text. It's totally doable, totally doable, but you're going to have to really love that text. What I would say is um, the first text that you study, I would use that, the, your analysis, I would use that as the one that you have the most to say about. Because in the second text, yes, you're adding new ideas, but you can also comment on the previous text. Do you see what I mean? So, for example, if I was looking at sexuality in Jane Eyre, and then I was looking at sexuality in um, Vanity Fair. My paragraphs about Vanity Fair could also refer back to my previous ideas a little bit. So the first text you've got more ideas on, do first. Okay, right. The third one, the third little sentence for the type of, um, for the type of question 
is for ones who are super confident. Have a pun in it. So I remember mine, it took me ages to figure it out. I remember I said I wanted to talk about music in fiction, in novels, in Victorian novels. So I put a pun in like the lost chord or the broken chord, um, colon, music in, Victor in Victorian fiction. Okay, so you could have a little pun in there. Um, not necessarily funny, I'm not meaning, but you know, some clever play with words, potentially alliteration, if if um if you want. And of course, when I look at your thesis, um I might might suggest that with um if, if one occurs to me. Right, um, so that is the um question. Now let's think, you know the blanks. Obviously. You're thinking, oh, sorry, I'm videoing something. Okay. okay, give me a minute. I feel like we're back in lockdown, don't we? Right, um, so with one of the best things to go for is themes, perhaps. So it's a nice broad range of something for you to track through both novels. Sorry, I can hear my little kid coming up here. So some of the themes we looked at, you can see like sexuality comes up time and time again. Violence, perhaps. Love, fear, power. Anything for me that goes to um, a really interesting, possibly dark or dramatic place. Something that um, for me... The society at the time is a little bit uncomfortable about and it feels a little bit dangerous. That that can be a good focus. You feel like you're right in about something on the edge. Um, I mean, obviously, family, that can be pretty toxic as well. Basically, anything you're talking about is like some sort of problem that you've noticed. So for me, when I was looking at Victorian fiction, for example, I would be like, OK, society says the Victorians should uh, be holier than thou, only have sex before, um, before it, only have sex after marriage. Um, and women, by the way, should be virgins until they're married and then blah, 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 shouldn't even enjoy it. And yet... In these novels, especially written by women, there's sex absolutely everywhere. What the hell is going on? So I noticed that there was a problem with, like, the party line, the, like, society's line, and about how women should behave around sexuality. And then what was actually going on in these novels showed the bubbling undercurrent of stuff. So especially things that sometimes don't make sense. Um can be very interesting sources of dissertation, in my opinion. Right, um, what else did I want to say? Okay, so you could go for your thematic focus, or you could go for a literary focus. Um, by literary focus, I mean, you know, you could look at um, an examination of the significance of symbolism in Jane Eyre and Vanity Fair, for example. So you'll just be tracking different symbols or narrative, or um, if you're doing plays, um, props, uh, stagecraft, soliloquies, whatever it is, and you just look at look at several of them, six in each if you want, okay? Um, I have no preference. Sometimes I think it's quite nice to, like if you're looking at setting, well, that's a really nice way of separating your um, essay, isn't it? Looking at different place, different place, different place. Interesting way of doing it. Um, completely up to you. So I think I've talked about everything. No, I haven't. I haven't actually said what goes in a thesis, have I? Right. A thesis is supposed to be written before you've actually done the whole thing. It's not, it's not like, you know, sometimes say write the introduction afterwards when you know what's going on. Well, the thesis is more like your hunch, your experimentation. Um, what do you think? It's almost like you're not quite sure, but you're going to give me a kind of an educated guess on something because you haven't done the work yet. You might be completely wrong. And if you're wrong, you'll change your thesis. So for me, like talking about female sexuality, um, yeah, it's just how there was a power with female sexuality that um, men seem to be frightened of. And so 
despite the fact that women are supposed to be powerless in that situation, oddly, in a lot of the fiction, they ended up powerful, more powerful than men, in fact. And there was this, that, that was, that, I noticed that and I couldn't quite unnotice it once it became apparent to me. Um, so, yeah, look, what kind of thing have you noticed about it? Um, or another one, um, I was looking through some of my uni essays and um, an argument I often came up with, which is quite cheeky, I suppose, was that there were contradictory signs. And that was my argument, contradictory signs or an exploration into something. So even if you don't want to pin your colours to the mast and you want to leave it open, just say, look, I've just noticed there's loads of contradictions. What could that mean? So good luck with your thesis. Um, so in your thesis mention, define the word, whatever, whatever the theme is or whatever it is. So even if you're looking at narrative, well, tell me what the narrative is in both novels. You know, what kind of narrative is it? Or if you're looking at the theme of sexuality, what, what does sexuality mean to you? Pin it down as a definition and then talk about what you think, it, what you think is going on about, you know, what I said about it being contradictory or whatever. Good luck. I'm here to help you. Um, I've rattled on long enough and I'm going to go and cook some tea. Bye bye, folks.